space is the final frontier. Certainly a very surreal experience being in space. It's just so beautiful. It's, the colors are very bright and vivid and you look out towards the what we call the earth limb, the horizon, and the sunlight passing through the air of the atmosphere causes it to almost fluoresce, glow these beautiful shades of blue. So uh, it really is a, a special experience. The head of NASA has used some pretty strong language when describing China's space program in recent years. I think uh, we are in a space race with China. Uh, they are very aggressive and they are very good. And a lot of that success has come within the last few years. My sense is overall, China still has some way to go um, in terms of um, catching up with the United States um, in uh, space science and technology. But the Chinese space program has been quite successful particularly from 1990s, um, with the support of the financial um, contribution from the um, central government. And, um, you know, they, they, they have recruited um, many uh, talents um, to develop science and technology. Now China is catching up. That was Dr. Bin Lee, an expert in the laws governing space technology and exploration. We know that space is so critical um, to these two countries' economy, to these two countries' uh, international standing. The United States is building up its space force. And I believe the same thing is happening within China to make sure that China is not only catching up, but also in some areas might overtake the United States. In 2022, global spending on space programs hit a record 103 billion US dollars, with the US accounting for about half of that spending. But China is catching up, having doubled their space spending in the past decade. Leroy Chow is a retired astronaut and one-time commander of the International Space Station. He visited the Chinese Astronaut Center in 2006. They are very serious about it. They've obviously uh, borrowed a lot of technology from the Russians, but they've done that thing where they've taken it and made it a little bit better, right? They've modernized it. And so um, their hardware is very good. Their space station is actually quite advanced. And so, uh, you know, it's not nearly as large as the ISS. However, I would argue that it's actually better to be smaller. So I think the Chinese have probably built a pretty good compromise uh, size station that's big enough to do meaningful work, but small enough that you're not spending all your time doing maintenance and repair work. The space station is manned full time by Taikonauts, who spend most of their time conducting research, as well as practicing traditional Chinese musical instruments, teaching science lessons. Take this glass of water to Mr. Ye. Exercising and of course, conducting spacewalks. So is there a new space race going on? And is China winning? I don't think so. It's not like in the, in the 60s with the Soviet Union where we were racing to the moon. There was a feeling in the country and probably in the Soviet Union too that this was life or death. We had to win. We had to win this to show that we had the superior technology. And we did when we landed um, humans on the moon in 1969. If China were to land the next astronauts on the moon, okay, well, that's great. You know, we did it in 1969. Uh, we're planning to do it again. A couple of years ago, the Chinese spacecraft landed on the far side of the moon. And that was the first time that um, any country has done that. Because of the competition between China and the United States, um, almost on all fronts, 
um, this competition will continue. The Chinese are very um, intolerant of any examination of their space program. They are very inflexible. They are not very transparent. I wish they'd do what the old Soviet Union did when it came to civilian space. I wish they'd cooperate and be transparent. But the US has also been unwilling to work with China. In 2001, Congress enacted the Wolf Amendment, limiting NASA from collaborating with the Chinese government or Chinese companies. I think it's very important that the United States and the United States have a rule that the United States and the United States have a rule that the United States and the United States have a rule. Yeah, I think the situation has frankly deteriorated on both sides. You know, there's a huge distrust in the United States of the Chinese government, the Chinese Communist Party. Similarly, on the Chinese side, Xi Jinping has cemented his power. You know, he's, you know, looking to the long term, wants to become the leading superpower to surpass the United States. 